Welcome to Always Home to Smallville, level 33.1, the new 52, number five. <laughs> Whatever we are on this thing. Uh, thank you all for joining us. I have Joy Deanberg. Hey, how's it going? And Mateo Santiago. Hey, Zach. Welcome to be back. And oh, yeah, I'm Zach Moore, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really sold into a, a, a official introduction for how to do do these but yes this is the uh new 52 level 33.1 number five and we are talking about the flash flash trailer maybe some of y'all are watching the flash tv show and its final season of course i mean i want to talk about some smallville at the end i guess we could do that but um yeah you know i don't really think i've talked much about the flash trailer or the flash movie since the trailer came out because uh, I knew we were going to do one of these. I'm like, yeah, I'll talk about it on one of these. Mm-hmm. Um, everyone seems to be losing their minds about it because Michael Keaton's Batman, which has always been the reason he's in it. Like, that's 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 the reason, because everybody said, who cares about the Flash? And I said, I do. And I really like the Flash character <laughs> and what he brings to the table in his comic book stories. And I'm looking forward to not seeing any of those in the Flash movie. So, <laughs> Joey, let's start with you, man. The Flash trailer. Yeah. What'd you think? Yeah, I um had to give the download to everybody at my Super Bowl party. You know, hey, I know you guys are gonna be like, oh my god, Michael Keaton's coming back. I know <laughs> I've known for a long time. <laughs> uh, but if I am if I'm filling up my plate of nachos, please just even though I can see it on Twitter within 30 seconds, I said if I'm filling up my plate with nachos, scream at me so I can come back and, and see it, see it in the moment. And yeah, I was, you know, a little like. Uh, okay throughout the beginning of the trailer but then you know once once uh michael keaton showed up uh you know you have to separate art from artists right you have to separate out uh some things to to be able to try to enjoy stuff uh but i i was able to make that switch pretty easy when i when i saw him there and and he's really not one of my favorite batman um actors like that no there's... no no when, when you're when you're talking about let's <laughs> Separating yeah, sorry. Art from artists, <laughs> not Michael Keaton. <laughs> not <laughs> the way, the way not, you were saying that was like, sorry. well, you know, you got to separate people in the real world from really on the screen. But I guess you know, once I saw Michael Keaton as Batman, I was <laughs> you were referring to, of course. Yes, yes. I, I didn't even want to talk about him. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. I, I with everything going on with Ezra Miller, didn't really, you know, I I kind of was on the not as excited um, side, but. I'm just willing to shut my brain off for a few hours. If if this looks as if this is as good as I thought the trailer looked, I'm excited. Mm-hmm. Well, it is the greatest superhero movie ever made, according to James Gunn and everybody. So, we'll, hey, he's never we'll been see. Wrong. He's never been. Wrong. Hey, he he is he has not missed on a DC movie yet. This is true. I mean, the Suicide Squad was fine. <laughs> Dang. Hey, <laughs> and if we really want to back up just to <laughs> Warner Brother properties in general, yeah. Those are the best Scooby Doo movies I've ever seen in my life. Oh my gosh! <laughs> <laughs> All right, there it is. <laughs> oh my gosh! Dang, no love for Zombie Island, huh? Oh, it's that's. You know what? I don't have a Scooby Doo ranking on my letterbox. Uh, <laughs> Scooby Doo ranking. God. <laughs> All right, well, Mateo, what do you think Yo. about the Flash trailer, man? Man, so I remember I was at a Super Bowl party. And I was like getting some pizza, getting ready for the game. And I knew that they were going to drop it during the game. But like even before kickoff, I got a notification on my phone saying that the trailer had dropped. And I was like, wait, what? Yeah. And I li- I literally just grabbed like a few of my friends and be like, yo, we got to watch this real quick. Yeah. And like they're literally like, yo, Matt, what are you trying to uh, why are you pulling this over here for? I'm like, yo, yeah, you you got to see this. And we, we just uh, put it on and. I was honestly astonished by um, one how look how good it looked. Like the visuals, I thought looked really really solid. Um, seeing the multiple Batmen in the trailer, seeing Ben Affleck and Keaton in action was just unbelievable. It's so crazy, especially because like I really enjoyed Pattinson as Batman last year. So getting to see a little bit more of uh, Affleck and Keaton, I was just like, man. I, I forgot how good these guys are. 
And I'm definitely going to miss uh, Affleck uh, once he's out the door. Cause like, there's like a shot in the trailer where you see him in the more like bluish gray, um, like Neil Adams costume. And I'm just like, Oh my gosh, this is oh, great. And yeah, the drama of Ezra Miller, it's, it's obviously been concerning in regards to the movie, but I will say watching a trailer, I was just like, I forgot how good of an actor Ezra Miller is like at the very beginning specifically where, um, where they talk or talk where Barry is talking about, um, you know, that they're willing to fight for this timeline because this is where his mom lived. I was like, dang, Ezra, Mil- Ezra Miller is still a really good actor. Like all the craziness aside, he can still like pull on the heartstrings a little bit and, seeing how and like one of my favorite shots in the trailer it's like a very le- low-key moment it's act it's the shot right after um keaton goes on batman it's uh it's like where the there's the two berries and like one of them faints and the other just has like a grin on his face i really like it because it kind of goes to show the difference between the two of them whereas like um the one who faints is more akin to like what we saw from the justice league movie and then the one who's just kind of smirking there is just like yeah that's batman and it's like you know he's much more um he's much more well groomed and seeing supergirl at the end i thought was uh was just a great um a uh, great little uh, moment i was surprised honestly that it was kara in the i didn't think that they were going to go that route <laughs> to be honest well, you knew, you knew Supergirl was going to be in it, right? No, I knew Supergirl was going to be in it. To be honest, I thought they were just going to gender flip Clark. Which is kind of what they did. <laughs> <laughs> you're, not, you're not wrong, but I was like, I thought they just were going to, we're not going to do the, the Kara zor character in, uh, mm. all together. So the fact that like at the end, she's like, oh, my name is Kara. I was like, oh, so they are doing Kara. Okay, mm-hmm. cool. So... Yeah. All around, I thought it was just like a, a fantastic trailer, and I'm really looking forward to this movie. I really hope that this movie delivers all together. Um, it would be, I, I honestly, I don't want any more heartbreak. Like, I feel like I'm in an abusive relationship with DC where I get my hopes up and I yes. keep, keep getting disappointed. But, you know, and I think if they do knock it out of the park, what a great time. The reboot. The yeah. Yeah. Delete all yeah. that. Never happened. Doesn't matter. <laughs> Um, so yeah, so it sounds like you're really picking up what they're putting down. And I, I, I hear what you're saying. I, 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 everything you mentioned there, I'm like, oh yeah, there, there are some good acting moments here and all that. Um, mm-hmm. just the whole Ezra Miller thing though. I mean, it's, it's, it's amazing that there's, there's two of them yeah. in this movie. And it's like, could you not have, let's just, and there's a shot in the trailer where he's like, almost going to choke the other Barry. I'm like, oh yeah. Real world flashbacks well, right there. And I, I'm, I think we're going to have more than two. No, there's definitely because if you've seen the toys, there are certain other things that have been released mm-hmm. and, and whatnot. Yeah. And so there's no main villain, right? Or like, is there? Well, I mean, there Maybe is. We've Zod. seen him already. Well, there is Zod. Zod, that's yeah. right. Oh, hey, yeah. Hey, let's forget about the Zack Snyder movies. Let's move past those. But let's also Back to the Future 2 into Man of Steel. You guys love yeah. that, right? I don't yeah. I'm very I'm conflicted about this very much so because I'm like I of course I wanted to see Michael Keaton back as Batman. Now, who didn't, mm-hmm. right? But it just like it's showing all this that happened. Uh I mean all the all the all the reaction yeah. like but like y'all like so I was at a Super Bowl party and stuff. But before that, I was like, "Oh, the internet's blowing up." Better watch this trailer before I go. And I watched him like, oh, okay. I needed this to sit and simmer and process. Mm-hmm. And then they're at a Super Bowl party and the, and the trailer comes up. And I'm like, you know, I don't, I'm not like advertising, like, hey guys, hey, yeah. I'm just kind of, I want to like sit back and see what like the general public's reaction is. Somebody's like, oh, is that Michael Keaton? Is Batman? Oh, man, <laughs> Keaton's Batman. I'm in. I'm like, there it is. That's, that's yeah. why he's here. And that's, that's why, why you put here. that at the Super Bowl. That's, I mean, I had people at, at work who I've never talked to about a comic book movie, but they, you know, they've seen the, the Superman fake year up in my, in my cubicle. So people are just kind of walking by like, Hey, so what's, how is Michael Keaton back? And like, they're just like, you have to. Is that, was that Christian Bale? Yes. Uh, you, you know what's so oh funny? Gosh. There's so much misinformation going around about all that. Like <laughs> there's the shot of Batfleck on the bike and that's, that's Batfleck on the bike. It's very, yeah. everyone knows this. Everyone knows this. And yet it's like, could that be Christian Bale's bet? So like, I'm like, no, it's not. Stop it. They're clickbait BS. Like, we, he's not in this. All right. Whoa. Chris Nolan would never allow such a thing. 
Okay. Also, he was Batman for less than a year. So I, uh, I did have one person and they're like, okay, so do I need to like watch any movies before this? I'm like, yeah, I'll, I'll loan you some movies. So I gave, yeah, gave that person like Man of Steel. And, 15 movies before. <laughs> and I, I was just going to do like the Man of Steel to and th- through Justice League trilogy. And that, yeah. that's a good enough setup, I thought. And I think so. And and she watches. I really liked that movie. I'm like, oh, you're gonna love that the movie you're gonna you're watching these for is the end. You're yeah, just, it's it's gonna be great. They just they just that's that's like if I would be honestly I would be more excited about this if it was not Ezra Miller. Like mm-hmm. I understand what you're saying, but I I pick up the emotional beats. Of like you know what, that was some good stuff there. We'll see what they do throughout the film as an actor because like I of the Justice League, he was by far my least favorite member. <laughs> you know, as as the for I'm sure. like. Oh wow! I can't wait to see that. Especially like you have Grant Gustin yeah. as the Flash for the last nine years. You had John Wesley Shipp as the Flash the last thirty years. Like they're doing great. I love I love the Flash. I love the Flash TV show. Both of them. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm, I'm watching the last season of Flash now as as it wraps up. Uh, maybe I'll go in and watch everything I missed because I did tune out at some point. Um, so you couple with the fact that like yeah whatever. And then like all the real world stuff, which was like continuous and they never really seemed to face any real consequences for. And they canceled Batgirl. <laughs> but let's keep this movie. And I understand why it's way too much, way too expensive. Uh, the potential is there. So mm-hmm. the WB's goal is like, well, if we can keep Ezra Miller just behaving themselves for like a few months, we can get this movie out, hopefully yeah. make a make a good profit and then move on with other, to other things. Uh, because yeah, people are excited to see Michael Keaton back as Batman, but that, that's all people are talking about. Also, hey, it's Ben Affleck. People are excited to see him back as Batman, right? Because people thought he was done. I can't remember how many how many articles I read. Like, you'll never see Ben Affleck as Batman again. He's done. He doesn't want to do. Batman. I'm like, okay, well, there he is again. Like, I've seen him in three things since you told me we're never going to see him again. Yeah. Um, it's just there's just so much there's so much baggage of this movie. So much is weighing on this movie. I think is it's like if if it does well. Honestly, they're kind of screwed both the way. It's a double-edged sword, right? If mm-hmm. this does well, people are like, well, great. I can't wait to see more of Michael Keaton and more of Ezra Miller and more of Ben Affleck or whatever, right? Uh, sorry, we're done now. They're not coming back. Oh, well, that's straight. Like, again, the re- the, the general audience member. If it does poorly, it's like, well, crap, we just lost, we just lost $700 million. <laughs> but hey, come see our next movie next year when we reboot Superman. So it's it's interesting. Same thing with Aquaman 2. You were hearing all these things about Aquaman 2 right now. Who knows if that's who knows what's accurate, right? But mm-hmm. the word is like, well, it's not good. And there's reshoots and all this stuff. Um, and so we're 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 four movies away from this reboot as it is, right? So it's mm-hmm. it's it's an interesting year because I don't my stock on Shazam 2 has dropped quite a bit these, <laughs> these last few months. It doesn't look very good. Yeah. I love the first Shazam. Uh Taylor, what do you so. think about Shazam 2? Are you excited to to see Fury of the Gods or? Um, I'll say this, like, I am thoroughly, um, looking forward to it mostly just because of the continuation of, of the story, the family storyline. Like, I, I think that's what really connected me to the first one in the first place. And like the, the villain was fine in, um, the first one, to be honest, I don't remember his name. So, I mean, I like Helen Mary. Mark I Strong. Ha- no. Mar- Sinestro. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, I, I, I like Helen Mirren. I like Lucy Liu. Um, I hope they, um, are formidable as, um, as they can be, I guess. But I think that as long as the characters, like the family dynamic is there, I'm all for it. I think what's actually just hilarious is like how, uh, the rock has completely divorced himself from this franchise, even though he's like <laughs> the Joker to Shazam's like <laughs> what's going on here. Big miscalculation. Like, yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's like I, I get you wanted to fight Superman. Like who wouldn't, right? But like you need to involve Shazam or Captain Marvel, I should say. Uh, because that's who that's who the villain should be in Shazam too. It should be Black Adam. Like there's should have been the villain in Shazam one. No, well, that's yeah. That's also very true. <laughs> <laughs> like they got away with it by the skin of their teeth by the fact that they made a good movie. So yeah. yes. Yes. And I'm hoping that they can pull that magic trick off again. We'll see. I, I mean, it, it it looks as generic and uninspired as can be. I think in the in the in the trailer, <laughs> You're not wrong. But, uh, I, of course, I'm going to see it. You'll hear us talk about it on on the Patreon as you guys always do for all for all DC releases. Uh yeah. So there's that. 
and the flash comes out a couple months later and then let's not forget blue beetle comes out <laughs> don't forget blue beetle and finally that's see that's why brandon roth cannot be ted court on arrow back in 2013 <laughs> yeah. because they were working on this blue beetle movie that came out 10 years later which doesn't even start ted court it's jaime remus well uh, uh which is great uh, I, I, he was the one he was the blue beetle in the small episode and he's the blue beetle on young justice so that's you know that, that's i think that is the blue the current blue beetle but uh he's, he's actually the third blue beetle because there's mm-hmm. what's it, dan garrett yep ted cord and jaime reyes jaime reyes yeah <laughs> so yeah that's a that's a that's a good episode of small by the way the booster gold episode i mean mm-hmm. the blue beetle is probably the weakest part of that episode but <laughs> That's it, like it, it does not hold up. It, the 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 effects it does not hold up. I watched no, it a little while no, ago. No, the Blue Beetle costume is very much like um, Power Rangers, um, Beetle yeah. If you want to get too too cute with the references, but it's a good episode. But it's definitely the least of the Jeff Johns episodes uh, yeah. because you have Absolute Justice and Legion, and those are those are like all time <laughs> great episodes yeah. of the show. And they get this, which I love the Clark Kent stuff in it. Right, because that's they're, like they're where really he's really. Like, oh, I gotta, gotta, gotta go to the bathroom, you know. Yeah. Great stuff. But anyway, don't forget about Blue Beetle. Don't sleep on Blue Beetle. I mean, sure, I'll go see it. I mean, I, I is he gonna is he gonna live in Texas? Because I know that he lives in El Paso. That that I may, at least in some versions huh. of Blue Beetle. At least he did, and I think he did on uh, in, in Young Justice. Justice for sure. Yes. <laughs> like Texas, yes. Um. So anyway, always good to see how they represent your home state in film, and. Then there's Aquaman at the end of the year, which doesn't really care about Aquaman anymore. I love yeah. the first Aquaman. That's a top three DCEU movie for me. You know, I mean, I, but it's just, it's been, I can't believe it's been five years since Aquaman. That's crazy. Won. Yeah. Aqu- Aquaman is, that's one of the few that I, I saw in, in theaters and I was like, yeah, that was pretty good. And I haven't, I'm pretty sure I saw plastic on my DVD. <laughs> oh, wow. I just, I'm, DVD? I, it's Blu-ray? probably, I, I think I just, <laughs> i mean I, I wouldn't count it out just because like everyone was saying who cares about the first aquaman movie and it made a billion dollars so i wouldn't yeah. completely count it out I, I think ultimately um when we see a trailer we'll probably get a better look at like what the vibes are all around yeah black yeah, with, suit aquaman and heck um jason momoa is going to be the villain in the next fast and furious movie so if that movie like if people really like him in that movie that might um just like boost up aquaman even more well alan richton from smallville is also in fast and furious 10 yeah oh. two aquaman in that one they, movie. they better have it. a scene what they better have a scene together <laughs> i might go see that i've only seen one fast and furious movie oh wow yeah it's not my thing but i'll go see this one if the aquamans have a scene together somebody let me know yeah with uh, uh, there's, de- there's definitely a scene in the trailer where they're shooting at each other but i <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I don't know if they're gonna have a lot of um, like a a man manny mano conversation. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I with the way that people go to theaters now, it's just it's it's so when when you've already signaled like, hey, these aren't gonna be a part of the bigger story. I just I I don't feel like as many people are going. And, and DC really isn't a, a a household name at this point. Like, oh yeah, the new DC. Like, I I just I feel like I, you know, any Marvel movie comes out with minimal hype to it, the theaters are pretty pretty full. And I I don't know. I'm just I'm nervous. Well, I I think that's part of the the reboot kind of problem because like it's kind of not the more that's been revealed, it's kind of not a reboot. It's just like yeah, they're just like honestly, they're just continuing what they were doing already they were like well we're taking on henry cavill and ben affleck and everything else is going to stay it's kind of what they're doing they're just i mean for like i mean because they're like we're not sure about ezra Miller. we're not sure about gal gadot we're not sure about jason Ma. like no i thought this was supposed to be the we're sure and here's a real i would prefer mm-hmm. a more clean break like, yeah cut mm-hmm. and then that would cause the problem you're talking about joy which is like well yeah. why what are these movies even for i even said like let's just write them all off as tax write-offs at this point right make your money back yeah um because yeah i don't i don't think shazam 2 is going to do bank uh the beatles certainly is not uh so it's all gonna be aquaman's i don't even know why i mean i like aquaman too right i mean, I like aquaman the first one right mm-hmm. how does how does aquaman and it's a better movie than this but how does aquaman make a billion dollars and then black adam no makes idea. like 350 million like because because are they that different are they that different films yeah. 
Yeah, no, and not at all. And 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 you have the rock. Yeah, you have the, the, supposed the to be number one a... marketing <laughs> uh, get butts and seats type of actors out there right now. And <laughs> I, I don't understand it. So the, this box office stuff, it's it's a, it's a crapshoot. But I think the Michael Keaton factor, which was always the plan, mm-hmm. is going to help them. Now I'm I'm now mad. Like I've 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 come to Lance's side of things, even though he said about this movie forever. I am mad because like I was always said, like, well, okay, like we're gonna do this, it's prop of the flash, and then we're gonna get a Batman Beyond movie. So it's fine, right? Just but now it's like that's been canceled now. And Michael Keaton, he's not old man Bruce and like maybe a robo suit, he's just Batman moving around quicker, <laughs> stronger, and better than he ever had in his prime of his life. He's a 70 year old Batman fl- flying around like Black Adam. He got like, Christian Bale's knee brace. Yeah, that's it. Nice. And so that yeah, so I don't know. So I'm very conflicted on this because I see this trailer. And I'm like, you know, I like the Flash. I would have liked a Flash story instead of a Batman story. And yes, I know this is Flashpoint, but that's kind of a crossover kind of story. And it's not yeah. So it's 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 an adaptation of Flashpoint. Um, you could have almost built it as a Batman Flashpoint or something like that. Like this will be retitled one day. Like when it comes out on home video, like. Batman, answer the call. You know, like Ghostbusters was. You know? Yeah. <laughs> like it's because you see that worlds collide thing. You mm-hmm. know, that's going to become like part of the title, I bet. Like X2 X Men United. Like that's going to be. Yeah. They, like, and, yeah, we saw plenty of Flash, but they're leaning so heavily into Batman, which is obviously the right move financially. Yeah. But they did that literally with Birds of Prey. So I wouldn't put it past them. <laughs> The, the nice. emancipation of one Harley Quinn. Yeah, like that's too long. So let's just make it Harley Quinn, semicolon birds of prey and call it a day. <laughs> which which probably should have been the title in yeah, the first place. Had, yes. Yeah, people have no idea what oh, birds of prey. Like the average theater goer is like, what what is that? But one yeah, ticket that, for Harley Quinn, please. That's probably what they said. Yeah. That, literally, that's honestly that, probably, to their a, that's, to their AMC app. <laughs> honestly, I think the um uh, that probably would have been like the best marketing play. Like, I honestly think that like the movie would have performed better in the box office had they capitalized on Harley's like name because, and like, honestly, because like Harley, um, was it not Harley? Um, Margot Robbie said she wanted to do like a Gotham city sirens movie. Be like, yeah, Hey, you can, you can, you could have done a trilogy where it's just kind of like Harley Quinn and the birds of prey, Harley Quinn and the, and uh, what is it? They uh, Gotham city sirens, Harley Quinn and poison Ivy. Like yeah. there <laughs> you're good. <laughs> Yeah, but now and, we're gonna see Lady Gaga as Harley Quinn. Yeah, <laughs> I'm super excited for Joker too. Like, I'm I, curious about it. Oh, I yeah. love the I love the first Joker. I, uh, although it's perfect as a standalone thing, sequelizing it is like very dangerous. Mm-hmm. I would be like, you could unravel the entire like cool ambiguity that the first film like works on such a high level for me. That's what works for me at the end. You know, I'm like okay, was this? Well, what is this? What even was this that we saw? I don't know. But then you make a sequel and it kind of like you have to like define like where you are and all that stuff. Uh, I don't know, but it's a musical with Lady Gaga. That's insane. I love it. And I can't wait for it. It's probably what I'm most excited about of anything coming out DC, seriously. Because again, you think I would be excited about The Flash. I'm going to see it. It's just, I don't know, man. I, I, I'm i just, I'm just very quick about it. I, I, uh, it, it, it. In typical DC fashion, they don't earn it. Flashpoint was a story like that was based off, you know, decades of stuff they were doing in the comic books, you know? Yeah. And it's like, oh, what's what's the first we're finally getting a Flash movie? What should we do? Uh, this big crossover event thing, you know, it's hey, fun. It, Flashpoint kicked off, like kind of kicked off the new 52, right? And in, in a, in a, yeah, it like it transitioned it. Yeah. And that worked and out great. That was I, and the, <laughs> and the new 52 money, so it did work out great actually so i mean yeah really and, mission and the new 52 picked and chose what they wanted to keep and what they wanted to start fresh they cl- did a clean slate with superman and kept all of batman's history and that's basically what we're doing right and then Except rebirth fixed superman's history thank god <laughs> yes yeah. yes so in a few years they'll redo superman again and then henry cavill has henry been cavill off in the shadows the back. entire time yep Yep, him, 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 and his beard and his black suit. And Amy Adams have been living a wonderful life, <laughs> Ra- yeah. uh, raising their son. Yeah, I don't. And, and, and then we'll get a Super Sons movie there. And we'll get we're already we already have Damien, Damien and Brave yeah. and the Bold. Yeah, so everyone's just, favorite Robin, Damien Wayne. Yes, definitely my favorite Robin. <laughs> I don't know if that's a hot take or not. Not, not, not on my corner. But no. I will say, um, I was annoyed about that decision at first. 
given some thought, you know what? I was like, okay, it actually kind of like it, it entertains uh, the idea a little bit just because I was thinking, you know what? They made X-23 really cool in, in Logan. Like this little 12-year-old kid who's like a killing machine. I'm just like, mm-hmm. you know what? If they can do that with Damien, I think that'd be really cool. So I'm 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 on the train now, just yeah. based on that logic. If you if you tap into something like that, I think they can make it really work. And I'm I'm counting on James Gunn mentioning the phrase "bat family" when he was talking. Oh, night. But like, be as long as as long as it, Damien isn't just like, oh, this is Robin and this yes. is it. Like that is that is I my concern, everything. Joy. Mm-hmm. That is my concern because it's like, I, oh, this is Robin. Like, no, 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 no. You were the fourth Robin. Yeah, I I, I want a firm. <laughs> Nightwing is there it, it exists I want either I want Jason just already dead and mm-hmm. maybe Tim is maybe Tim is there and we're switching over at that time or Tim I don't I poor Tim, Tim I, Drake man yeah Tim, no respect Tim's gonna be the rough one I think yeah. like yeah. I think we'll um, forget about him Nightwing is definitely gonna be there I would be shocked if he isn't Jason I think will There'll probably, be a suit in the back cave right? yep exactly yep. and yeah, Tim will probably be just like long forgotten as he always is. So uh, that's honestly probably how they're going to um, play it out. And maybe we'll get like a mention of Barbara. Mm, yeah, the Bat family. Let's see it. We'll see. Yeah, it, it is odd. We're going to have a Batman with presumably his fourth Robin and a young Superman. But I guess that's how we do things these days. Uh, but hey, look, the, the Flash trailer, right? So mm-hmm. you see all this stuff. There's a lot of cool stuff in there. Right. I mean, like, it's, it's I'm not going to lie. It's cool stuff. Yeah. I mean, it's uh, uh, I, I I don't know. I mean, there's been lots of like leaks and rumors and mm-hmm. based off that trailer, it's all true. <laughs> so to quote Harrison Ford from The Force Awakens, it's true. All of it. So we'll see. Um, I'm going to go into it with open mind, but I'm not. I don't know. I'm just I'm not I I, I don't know. Like, I, I, I just I should be a lot more excited for this than I am. I'm very conflicted about it all. Because of all the mess that's going on, like it's, it's like it was, because you know the end was supposed to be like, oh, here's the new Batman and here's Supergirl and we're gonna continue and now it's like now they're gonna either delete that or change that and now it's leading mm-hmm. nothing and and they took away my Batman Beyond movie that I wanted for my whole life so it's like I, I'm just I'm upset about that I'm not gonna lie so um, it was we'll a tough see. one for all of us yes so we'll see if it look I as. The only thing worse than an Ezra Miller is a second wacky Ezra Miller. And I don't know if America is ready for that. Okay. Like they're yeah. the world. <laughs> it's like, they're playing up. Like that's the thing. People are, they compare this to like Spider-Man, no way home and all that stuff. And it's like, no, that was, that was more earned. You know, mm-hmm. like that was, that was like, you had a Spider-Man trilogy and then they came in here and then, you know what? All of Spider-Man interacted. Like Tom Holland didn't have like jump through a portal and like, Everybody got erased, and like, here's a different Doctor Strange you can talk to, like you know. Yeah. So, like that—that's the appeal of these multiverse things is like seeing the ones interact. So, and that's the thing. Like, is this he? His Flashpoint is a timeline thing, all right? Mm-hmm. This is a multiverse thing. So, like, did he? Did yeah. Earth eighty nine fold into the DCEU? What happened here? What do you? What do you guys? Why is well, why if, is his, if his mom on if, the if his mom doesn't die? Yeah. If his, if his mom doesn't die, then uh, Bruce is just 40 years older. That, see, that's a, <laughs> that's a thing, right? It's, it, you, they're, and here's the thing, right? If they were ever going to do Flashpoint, like the proper Flashpoint, you had the, you had Jeffrey Dean Morgan, you could be Thomas Wayne. Yeah, right? You had all these things. Sick. <laughs> that would have been amazing. And that is a proper adaptation. I'm not saying it has to be a literal page for page, word for word adaptation of things, but it's like, if you're going to adapt it, do it right, you know? Mm-hmm. Um he said he he told Victor he told Victor that mo- you could. That's another thing. Another universe. Cyborg, right? Supposed to supposed to be in this movie is a big part of the Flashpoint thing. Obviously, he's gone because of Ray Fisher's drama with WB or their their drama with him. Or well, they de- directly referenced him in Crisis. That you know, for a long time, I thought we're going to see that scene in the movie. We're not going to see that scene in the movie oh, yeah, because no, the, the costume's different now, right? But at the time, though, it was like, oh, that's why they're shooting it in the aspect ratio. It just seemed like you could just. You assume there would be some multiverse like sequence, which there probably still will be. And that would be in there and people like, what's that? And it'd be like, you know, like a comic book, a little asterisk with like more information. See Christ on the first part four. 
the worst part of Christ on the by the way, those five episodes. That was the, I recently rewatched it, and that's 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 the worst episode. That was not good. God bless your heart for rewatching them. <laughs> oh, I, so I, not, not, I, I also recently not, rewatched it, but ah, I, uh, I didn't get past the Batwoman episode. I that that ended in a, and I, you know, yep, the baby woke up a snap, that. and I didn't keep going. Well, the third one is good, the Flash one, because it has the John Wayne's ship Flash in it and his ending. Yes. So, okay, so the Flash season three, they did Flashpoint. Which is going to be better, that or the Flash movie? We'll see. Oh, it, it, that's the Flash movie, right? I, it's. I think it's going to be the movie because that yeah. that was a rough time in, in the show. That that was rough because they didn't like they didn't take advantage of it. it yeah, was you didn't like, spend time living one in, episode. Yeah, you know? that could have been that could have been half a season. But the problem sure. you know, they could happen today. It would have been a half season. Yeah, but could they though? Because there's so many other shows going on. Like, what is Arrow well, supposed no to take anymore. place? That's, <laughs> Oh, <laughs> well, you're just they going through Barry's that for season nine. <laughs> yeah. You're just going through Barry's experience it of it. Like, well, yeah, but yeah, I, but what are you supposed to do? Like you watch Arrow on Wednesday and everything's like yeah. it was, but you watch Flash on Tuesday and it's this crazy different world. Um, that that's that is one downside of having the all the shows, you know, of, of the shared universe. Um, I think my uh, my biggest almost done like the... a staggered start or something like I mean, because now they're not. They're, they are not following the traditional model anymore of start in the fall, <laughs> go through. Oh yeah, you know. No. And <laughs> COVID kind of jacked like, that up. Yeah. Now we'll just uh, we'll, we'll come out with something whatever. But like, like the way they treated like the Bizarro stuff and Superman and Lois, like that's almost the like they spent some time. I, th- I mean, I know they only had that mm-hmm. one full episode in the Bizarro world, but like it, it definitely had lasting effects throughout. Hmm. I think the um with going back to Flashpoint real quick, I think that what frustrated me the most was just like it because the idea of Flashpoint is that like he goes and saves his mom and then the rest of the world is kind of like jacked up because of it. Yo, everyone's lives are better <laughs> once he does Flashpoint. And I'm like, you missed the point. <laughs> what was the what was the reason he had to go back? What was like that like what, what was because going Wally on? got hurt? Wally got hurt. That's literally what it was. Oh, from the rival, right? Yeah, yeah. He got <laughs> hurt. He got hurt fighting the rival, and he's and then also like Barry was like losing his memories, whatever. That's what it was. Yeah, yeah. There was some yeah, of that but too. he he was just like, hey, like all good. He he literally was like, I will give it up if um if it means that my parents are safe. And then Wally got hurt, and he's like, well, I guess I gotta go back. <laughs> and you're like, what the heck? Yeah. Now who's the villain, Flash? <laughs> That's it, see. Okay, here's here's they the problem. Bring him back. They gotta bring they him are. back for the he last is. season. Eobard okay, Thawne is back. The original Eobard Thawne. Matt Lester. He was in Zorro. He was the bad guy, and the Antonio Banderas Zorro, or one of the bad guys. Um, which great because look, I love Tom Cavanaugh, but it's like, dude, you're not, you're not the, you're not Eobard Thawne. Your face, like as yeah. you know, because every freaking Wells, right? So whenever they would use it, even on Christ on Earth X, as much as I enjoy that, I was like. Ugh. Tom Cavanaugh. It's like it's the same one to some. Do they ever explain that? He was like, I'm from Earth One. And that's all that's all they explain. They don't explain how he survived. That's that's that, that's Wait, to me that's, in crisis on Christ on Earth X, where they're fighting the not he's the Nazi flash. Oh, you're right. Yes. And they, he's just like, here I am. And they're like, they, they never they bother explaining. I'm pretty that. sure they were like, hey, the more you time travel, the more uh the less things make sense. And that was it. <laughs> yeah. But that was that, and that's the first thing is like. You know, big, and we'll see. They're bringing back Reverse Flash. They're, uh, Eddie Thawne is coming back. So they're doing a lot of interesting stuff in the, in the final episodes of The Flash. Um, it's a, is this a shortened season? Yes. Oh, it's only God. 10 episodes. 13, is it? I, I think it was it's 10. 13. Wait, I gotta look well, this yeah, up. Check it out for us, yeah. Um, so they're bringing back, like, all the villains. Like, Zoom is coming back. Uh, Savitar. And this is like the actors too. This isn't like an arrow thing where it's like, let's get a guy in a death stroke mask. And, you know, this is like with Teddy Sears and you know. IMDB says 13. 13, really? Mm-hmm. Okay. Dang, good, good because that's good because I've watched the first three and I'm like, oh God, we're wasting a lot of time on stuff I don't care about. Can we get to the people I care? Like, like there, there's I, is I, our I, do we know if like I haven't paid any attention to any of the news? I just watched the season premiere. Is Cisco gonna come back? Is Tom Cavanaugh gonna come back at all? I don't know how they're there has been come back. There's been no word about Cisco, which okay. bothers me. Um, because yeah, that's he's like essential. Like, but let's have another character for Caitlin. 
Uh, uh, someone, I, so I, I fell off the flash so long ago, so I like yeah. I'm so out of touch about Dude, what's there, going on with Caitlin. There are characters I'm like, who is this? Like I haven't I haven't watched the Flash regularly since season three. All right, we're in season oh. nine now, and I'm like, who are these people? Like I got I kind of know who they are because I like keep a you know the crossovers I watch, and then I kind of you know keep an eye on things and you know on the social media and stuff. But there are some of these people like, who are you, and why are we wasting time with you? And they brought back Pied Piper this season to kind of like serve the Cisco role. It seems. Isn't um, that what Chester was there for? That's what I'm saying. I'm yeah. like, so they've recast. <laughs> my joke was like, when do they recast Cisco and Caitlin? But picture of Chester and Allegra. I'm like, who are you people? <laughs> but so so Chester is that, but also Pied Piper is that. Like the things he's been doing, and he has the arm gauntlets as he does. But I'm like. You're like yeah. vibe, man. They just cross out vibe and write in Pied Piper. I, I don't know. Um, you think Carlos would want to come back? I don't I don't know nothing about any behind the scenes drama that he had with the show. I think he just much like a lot of these actors, they want to move on, you know, like, like Willa Holland and Colton Haynes, but they all came back for the end of Arrow. You think he would come back for the end of Flash. So yeah, you gotta have like a can someone get him like a like a like a iPhone and record a video and just be like, hey Barry, like I, that's gonna feel like a big loss. Like I, I guess a lot of people felt that way about Lana and Smallville, but I did not. I was like, "You came back last time and ruined season eight. Please do not come back and ruin season 10. And she didn't, and that was fine. Um, maybe she should have seen Clark on the TV when he saved the world or something. But I don't know. Did, did you guys? Did it bother you that Lana wasn't in the series finale of Smallville? It did not at all. Actually, oh. it, it sounded like I guess uh, we're a little split. We're in there. No, here. no, please, no, yeah. <laughs> um. I don't know. Like, I mean, she was around since day one. I didn't need her to like um, come back and like create drama between the two of them. Um, I honestly would just been like, you know, like she's doing her own thing wherever she was. And honestly, like, it's funny because season like the the season 11 comics adapted essentially what I wanted out of Lana post like Clark's relationship. It's just kind of like her doing her own thing. And like, at least like, there's some acknowledgement about like like her knowing about Clark and Lois and just like accepting it for what it is like so I'm happy that there's like I have the comic at the very least on that front but her not being there um in any front whatsoever I mean I'm not that creative for them to uh to come up with an idea of how they would have like shoehorned her in but it would have been nice to at least her at least an acknowledgement of like the only acknowledgement she has is like that comic page that Chloe's reading her kid. So <laughs> that that and the flashback sequence, but the, oh you're before, right, you're just, right. Yeah. Um, but no, no, I, I hear you're saying I, that that would have been the only thing I would have been happy to see her back for if they could have told a story like that where it's like, hey, let's patch everything up with Lois and Clark and make sure everybody's because as it stands, it's like it considering you don't like just imagine the comics don't exist, which for most people out there who watch Marvel, they don't. We're super mm-hmm. fans, obviously. So it's like, oh, well, Lana got turned into Kryptonite, and then Clark and her can be together. So I guess Clark was like, well, I guess I'll marry Lois because I got really no other options. Uh, like that's it's a bad look. So I'm it saying, is a tough look. It's a bad look. What about Man, you, Joy? you guys? You guys roasted that episode, uh, her on that episode on the, the pod recently. Oh, you <laughs> haven't even heard the next one yet, but yeah. Oh no. <laughs> yeah, no. I I'm always whenever I'm rewatching. I mean, I hate the episode, but I'm always so happy when I'm like, all right, we're done. On it's over. She leaves. Yeah. 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 We're, we're done. Love you. Can oh. Move on. Oh. Oh. I'll rough. tell you what, as of this recording, Requiem has not come out, but I've recorded it. And uh, it's, it's, it's an entertaining episode. Like it is. But I just fundamentally disagree with like what how they end Lex and Lana's characters in that episode. It's like this. This is like this is what we did. Like it's yeah. a cool, like Darth Lex. We 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 all like you'll hear it in the episode. We were all like, I actually don't mind Darth Lex. It's a pretty creative workaround for the problem of not having him. And yeah. then just, but then the, just to kill him off, I'm like, oh. And then a lot of just leave. And remember, at that time they thought that was the last season, so that was gonna be it. Um. <laughs> like that was gonna be it. And then and then you read you read stuff from the from the executive producers like, well, everybody knows Lex isn't really dead. But then why did you do that? Like, why did you do that? They made it. As clear as possible that it, no, he probably is. He is. Like, no, they've identified his remains. Clark's like has ashes in his hand, and it's like, oh no, his. But no, my favorite thing about that was season nine. We was talking to Doctor Fate, and he's like, Clark, Clark Kent, 
Lex Luthor is your ultimate opponent. And Clark's like, Lex is dead. And Dr. Do- Fate just Moving on. As I was saying. Future, Marty. <laughs> I guess so. Anyway, I don't even know how we got a the series finale, Cisco. Yeah, I hope Cisco comes back. I don't know, man. You never know. Pete wasn't in the series finale of Smallville, but he was, uh, oh, I think right. Sam Jones III was otherwise occupied <laughs> at the time. Yep. So, yeah. Um, yeah, a Pete, a Pete wedding point. appearance would have been more meaningful than Lana showing up in my mind. Well, who I, were those I people? I agree with that. Who were those people that way? <laughs> Why aren't you wearing your glasses, Clark? I mean, I didn't Frank's wear my work. Wedding, <laughs> yeah, this is the Daily Planet staff. <laughs> Yeah, that would have been that would have been a a good time just to you know see if anybody from the Justice League is 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 available. I mean, if 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 Oliver can be his best man, you know maybe we can get Alan Richmond in there for yeah. He could be he could be well. They could just be sitting in the audience. Like you could anybody anybody from his past just to sit in the audience. To their credit, they did get most of the Justice League back for season ten. Yeah, like Aquaman, Black Canary. (laughs) Yeah, just not the finale. But that's the problem with Smallville. That becomes like a, is this a Superman show or is this a Justice League show, right? And that's the, mm-hmm. when everyone else, season nine did that well. They were like, no, that's, I love season nine and Salvation is probably my favorite episode because like they scatter the Justice League all around doing other things. So it's like, no, it's just Clark and Zod and that's it. And I'm like, that's very clever. So the, the, the best episode season finale wedge between these two bad season finales, eight and 10, but nine is it's right there. Um, so we'll see. I, you know, when, when they said the Flash was going to end, I was like, good. It's not going to be as long as Smallville. That was my first reaction. I was like, good. Smallville is going to be 10 years. So I don't know. I, I, oh, I just flashpoint, all that stuff, right? The setup for reverse flash. So cool in the first season, like the first season of the flash is so good. Holds up. still. Uh, yeah. And I'm like, I can't wait to see them like slowly unfold and reveal the backstory of reverse flash. Who I think is one of the most interesting villains in comic books, the reverse flash. Mm-hmm. Um, and then they just kind of give up like in season two. Like, yeah, he's a time remembrant. And he's whatever. Don't worry about it. I'm like, oh, I thought you guys had a plan or something. But with Matt Lester coming back for season nine, I think they're finally going to do the, the origin story. Because they said they're like, we're going to tell a story with him. We've been wanting to tell. I'm like, it better be his origin story. Because when he came back last season, I watched that episode. Because I'm like, oh, mm-hmm. wow, I'm going to do it. And that's the one where Diggle gave away the Green Lantern ring. I'm like, how far through it is. I'm glad I watched this. My favorite <laughs> thing from the Arrow series for now. And you just took it away. I don't this, want it. That's so crazy. And now that we're, they just scrapped the, the original Green Lantern series that they were working on. You're like, what the heck are they doing over it's, there? It's the Ted Cord thing. It's like, oh, you know, we can't, you can be the Atom, even though you're technically a Blue Beetle. It's, uh, anyway, all that to say. That, and see, that's the, see, and that's the problem I have with the Flash movie. Cause like Flashpoint is like reverse Flash is like a big part of it. And it's like, mm-hmm. nah, it's like an alternate evil Barry probably. And, Dead, don't worry about it. I'm like, you just, you just like erased one of my favorite villains in comic books. Thanks a lot. And the, and the, fla- the, flash what if Ezra Miller gets to play him? No, I think he will. I think that's the problem. Yeah. Like it's just going to be another, I mean, look, there are rumors, there are toys, there's all kinds of stuff floating around out there. So I don't think we're spoiling anything, but like there's obviously a villain here who's done some crazy stuff, the timeline, and it's going to be probably another, you know, uh, uh, was a dark flash, I think is the toy. Yeah. And it looks terrible, but it's a toy. So maybe it'll look better in live action. Probably. <laughs> anyway, it, it, yeah, that's 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 a big problem I have. Because I'm like, this is a very interesting character here. And you just like, are, don't, now we're never going to get a reverse Flash in a Flash movie ever. Or the rogues or any. Sometimes the Flash is very interesting, like villains and stories. And it's like, here's a Batman movie <laughs> that resets your universe. So that's, I'm very conflicted about the Flash movie. Yeah, it really sinks that um really sinks that we never really got the rogues and like uh really get the shine. Like even in the show, like I think like in the first season they did like a good job like introducing them in an individual basis. But it's just like after they killed um what's his name? Um Lenny Captain Snart, Cold. Yeah. Captain Cold, yes. After they well, killed after him after they shipped them off the legends. And- <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> after they shipped them off the legends for some reason and then killed them off, you're like, yeah, they're they're not really doing that anymore. We're just doing 5,000 speedsters. And well, there, there is a group of rogues in this season. Uh, it's a second captain. It's a second of everything, right? Now, as of this recording. Just like Smallville. Right? It's just, there's two, there must be two. There's a second Captain Boomerang. There's a second Fiddler. I think there was a first Fiddler. Somebody held up a picture. It was like, is it her? I'm like, no, it's somebody else. I'm like, okay. And there's a second Murmur. Are you kidding me? Murmur from it? Arrow? 
Is that the guy who had his like his mouth shut? Yes, played um, by the guy who played Jeremy Creek in the Smallville pilot. So, okay, no, hashtag it's all connected, right? But this is like this is like a, a female one who has a mask, and they're all they're all working for Red Death. You know, are you familiar with Red Death from the comic books, y'all? Um, very um to a very small extent. I know, like, um, isn't it during like the the Apocalypse War during in the New Fifty Two, or am I or well? Is it something it's else. Batman as the Flash. Right. Because okay. God okay. forbid you do anything Flash related this year without Batman. Uh, but it's not Batman in their overs, it's Batwoman. So they're gonna somehow she's got a lot of free time now, so why not? Yeah, but she's like older and stuff. And I I I th- hopefully they'll give Batwoman fans some sort of resolution to their show with this. Yeah, I hope. If not, I'm like, why are you a speedster? Um if there's any know. show that deserves resolution, it's, it's Legends. Like, what are we doing here? <laughs> what? But what about Arrow? What happened to William? That's what oh, I want to yeah. know. <laughs> That's that one's a really tough break. <laughs> That's why Oliver came back in the Flash season nine. He's gonna fight his son <laughs> in the Speed Force. My daughter can't do it, so I must do it myself. <laughs> I love. I just love poking fun of that. It's like y'all, you 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 put a backdoor pilot. You were so you were you were so certain you were gonna have this show. All right, you, you put this backdoor pilot in the last season of Arrow, which I get it. I understand why you did it. But then you you don't green light it. I'm like, and you but how many they they there were several shows that green light after that. There was Bat was Batwoman already? Yeah, Batwoman was already a thing. But they did Stargirl, right? They did Naomi, they did Superman and Lois, right? So it was it's not like they stopped making shows. <laughs> you know, it's yeah. just so I just to not make that show, which would well, have Star Girl correct. came from DC Universe, right? Oh yeah, yeah like man. Swamp Thing, yeah. yeah. Star Girls, well, yeah. Um, it's just like if you're gonna continue, like that's a direct sequel to your, the one that launched all this. You think that would be a logical one to do, but yeah, and you have you have a, plenty of people who were watching Arrow. You know, like my dad was one of those people who like he he saw Arrow a few times. He thought it was pretty good. He watched that entire thing. Every crossover, he had no idea what was going on, but he just kept <laughs> nice. going with Arrow. And, and, and somebody like that would have probably kept watching the spinoff show because it just feels mm-hmm. like that's that's the that's the trick of the backdoor pilot. You yeah. just you just keep watching. Like yeah. that was the idea with the Flash, right? In season two of Arrow, but the, the Flash was so successful. Like forget that. Like we're just gonna launch the show because like later on, like like seeing red was the episode in Arrow season two that was supposed to be like the Flash backdoor pilot. Like like that's why Cisco and Caitlin are in it and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. But they they changed their mind. Like oh like we don't need that anymore. We're just going straight to series, and that's cool. But that's yeah. I don't, anyway. You had, I mean, you had Kitty Cassidy. You had um, the other Black Canary from season five. You know what I'm talking about? Uh, yeah. Julianne Harkavy. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. I was like Jessica Harkavy. No, not Julianne Harkavy. Um, and, you had uh, them. Think... Oh, never mind. No, who else do we have? I don't even know. So, uh, I don't even recall. No, no, no. Uh, for some reason, I thought Katie Lots was in. It. I was like, no, that's uh. That's legends. Uh, yeah. That's legends. Might be. Well, they said if 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 the Flash season nine had been a full twenty two episode season, they would have tried to wrap up legends. But they, they also couldn't. said they'd be saying nonsense. They like, oh, if we had a season ten, we would have done Blackest Night. I'm like, come on. <laughs> no, no one wants that. No one wants that. I but but that I will look. Great point, Dale, about the rogues, right? Like, I will. I will use my same criticism for the Flash TV shows and for the Flash movie here. Like, where where are you not adapting all this like Flash material? Why are we doing why are we doing Green Lantern stories? <laughs> you know, <laughs> what are you they, talking about? Like, they don't have the cojones to do a regular Green Lantern, and they want to do Blackest Night. Are you kidding? It's that, and that's and that's look. In addition to the 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 undisputed quality of the DC animated universe, right? Yeah, like. They're good stories, period, right? Mm-hmm. But they're so good also because they have access to and can use all the characters in the way they're supposed to be used. Yeah. So many of these TV shows, unfortunately, they have their constraints. You know, like, oh, you can't do this or that or no Green Lantern or Batman's off limit. Oh, Superman, no, can't, not until we say you can, you know, that kind of stuff. And when the, the, the animated shows are like, here, Here's an entire stable of characters and stories. Do what you want. And then you get great stuff like Justice League Unlimited and everything came from right after. Anyway. Well, and even uh, all of those like uh, direct to DVD um, animated movies they've been doing too. I mean, that Flashpoint movie is one of my favorite anime. Like, 
I love all of those movies. I'll just throw well, any of them on all the time. Well, guess what, Joy? The Flash movie is going to be nothing like it. So yeah. hope... <laughs> I'm going to rewatch the Flashpoint movie actually for Always On of the Flash on the Patreon. I haven't watched nice. that in a long time. I actually, I actually kind of fell off the the animated movie. I was the director directed DVD animated movies like kind of in that New Fifty Two era when they started just doing like Throne yeah. of Atlantis and all this. I'm like, yeah, they're fine, but I just kind of fell off because they were they were very hit or miss after that. I think. Yeah, I agree. Um, I kind of fell off around the same time. They were also recasting all the voice actors all the time, which I'm like, I got to mm. latch on to somebody. Not, everyone doesn't have to be Kevin Conroy, but I'm like, can we just have one guy be Batman instead of like five people? Anyway, I will say Man, um, Man of Tomorrow and Long Halloween are both really solid. Yeah. Man of Tomorrow with uh, Darren Cress as Superman yes. and Zachary yeah. Quinto as Lex Luthor. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, I was like, hmm, that's I haven't watched those yet, but I was like, the, the casting obviously piqued my interest a, so <laughs> it is a it is a really solid uh solid film um i wish it wasn't like i mean they say it's not a superman origin story and like technically it isn't because they don't go into the krypton of it all but like they do are like they are in the way, way of essentially doing like his his early days of the daily planet like he's not a full-fledged reporter yet no. um, sounds like james gunn watched this before he yeah. released the slate <laughs> yeah like i mean honestly i wouldn't be too surprised if um because like um was it what's his name uh Jason Momoa is about to play him um Lobo Lobo yeah Lobo's in the movie so allegedly he's allegedly about to play him allegedly about to play him, but I'm saying um Lobo is in the Man of Tomorrow movie so I'm like yo I wouldn't be surprised if they took a few notes from this animated movie I that's a fantastic title I would have loved that to be the title instead of Superman Legacy which I think is like a very boring title hot take I well, I think if they done Man of Tomorrow, people would have associated with it with Henry Cavill, considering that we all predicted that like if there was going to be a Man of Steel sequel, it would be called yeah. Man of Tomorrow. <laughs> oh, with the two. Yes. Yeah. Oh, I would love that. Just another reason to be disappointed. Um, yeah, I feel like the. I don't know if this is like I feel like we're getting more back into like the. <laughs> uh like i feel like we had a long time like with the dark knight really started like just those different names of like using with you with the different comic book names and things and then now mm-hmm. we're back to you know shazam fury of the gods like, oh yeah <laughs> like like we're going through a cycle with the naming of these movies no dude you know. real talk uh before um long before the dark knight rises came out i honestly i told people all the time i'm guaranteeing that the third batman movie in the nolan trilogy trilogy will be called cape crusader that's oh. honest i honestly oh. told people that at this point they should just pull a george lucas and retroactively retitle batman begins to the dark knight begins why yeah. not and I say that because Indiana Jones and the <laughs> Raiders of the Lost Ark, not the title of that film, mm-hmm. but look at the box. Right, go find it on Disney Plus or whatever. I'm sh- that's George Lucas for you. Uh, actually, no, that's actually some restraint on George Lucas's point for not changing the title on the actual film. <laughs> he just changed it on the on the box and stuff. Anyway, I, I, I respect it though. I, I like the just the nothing's perfect. I'm I, I don't think I did this right. I'm gonna go fix it. Yeah, well, that's Star Wars: A New Hope. That's the real. <laughs> you remember? I mean, you guys are drunk than me, so I don't. Do you have the Star Wars, Star Wars VHS tapes? I did. Um, yeah, I, have, my, I have no idea where it is now. It blew my mind as a young child when I got these and it was like Star Wars on the side, but then really small, really small underneath it said A New Hope. It's like, what is just this? Kind of slowly sneaking it in. <laughs> yeah, it's just it's a slow burn because A New Hope has been the title since the 1981 re release of Star Wars, the original film mm-hmm. from 77. And no one calls it that. I mean, we do it. It's episode four now or New Hope. Like, you know, we're all nerds. We, we A and H when we're typing, we all know. But like the general, again, the general public. They're like, yeah, they're Star Wars, Empire Strikes Back, or the Jedi. So it's just so funny that like, like they get the it's so small. Like I'm thinking of the the, the THS, THX remastered versions of like the '95 or something that came out. Yeah. I remember we got them for Christmas, and it was just like, right, I'm like what is this? And here we are with Episode Four. <laughs> um, little did we know. I can't believe I didn't notice that as a kid either. Like because clearly we we watched the opening crawl. And like when somebody told me, you know, these are actually four, five, and six, I was like, what? And I'm like five years old. Give me a break. But it blows your mind. Can't wait till one, two, and three come out. Maybe they'll even make three more. So exciting. So. <laughs> and for oh, more, man. you just go to How Always Little 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 Star Wars. There you go. Always on Star Wars. Nice bug there. So, yeah, I, yeah, I don't know. 
I, 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 I'm just like, I, I, I'm all over the place with my feelings on this, on this, on this flash movie. I, I, I can't believe Michael Shannon came back for this. <laughs> Michael Shannon, like one of the greatest What's actors it? of our time who like, doesn't really it. care about this stuff, but he's like, I would guess they paid him really well. And Feora. And wait, if she's in the movie too. Yeah. Oh, I didn't see that in the trailer. Wow. Yeah, she she's in the cast. I don't think we saw her in the trailer, but she's 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 in the cast. Oh. So wasn't there some nice. drama, like some some George McFly type of drama with Batman v Superman with his body or something? No, I, I don't think there was drama. No, no, no. I don't think, okay, I I, he, I thought I remembered something. No, I think he was. I think it was a joke thing. I don't know, like like he was like he he. I remember he did some interview where he like I had flippers for hands and I got stuck in the bathroom and he was just screwing with people. Oh, you know? okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, they I probably just saw some headline or something. Oh, no, because him and Snyder are friends and he was like, you know, it's cool. And I think uh, I, I think he didn't actually appear at all. They just that that corpse is like a little like literal like mannequin or something. Um, so it's, he's, you know, it's just his likeness. I didn't think there was any drama about that. Um I wonder if Rosamond had any likeness rights for Requiem. <laughs> Looks like my eye. You owe me a thousand dollars. <laughs> he well, hey, he got really got into that on inside of you, I think. Yeah, did who was he talking to about that? Him. I, no, I, no, I'm but sorry, who... I can't remember his name, but the I think it was the George McFly actor. Was it Crispin Glover? They were talking. Yeah, yes, about yeah, it? Crispin Glover. Yeah, yeah. He I'm was go he was on that, that episode. He was really like asking a lot of details. Like he's he's probably calculating how much Smuggle owes him for all the time they showed <laughs> his face. I I you know I don't listen to every episode of Inside of You. Sorry, Same. I don't. So, uh, especially now that talk fills out, I'm like, yeah. well, that was that fills that need. Um, <laughs> but I do need to go catch up on some because I, I'll, I'll you know, I'll download them. Like, oh, I'll get to them one day, and I'm like, yeah. Then a smallville person's on. I'm like, oh, let me binge all the smallville people and get caught up. But well, uh, it was a smallville week, so it's perfect. Yeah, well, not mm-hmm. anymore. It's a waste yeah. now. Yeah. Oh yeah. But I don't. Maybe you could talk to somebody for more than ten minutes if you have them on inside of you <laughs> instead of. <laughs> instead of a uh, talkville but i know are you, are you guys uh keeping up with talkville at all i'm usually uh, within three or four episodes <laughs> what is that for the most part i try to keep up with it like um i i listen to a lot of podcasts as it is so i think i'm more selective about like which episodes i listen to like i just listened to heat um a few days ago that's crazy uh, i didn't like it right i i, I was shocked I, I i couldn't believe it now that is that i mean i'm not gonna say top 10 that is a top 25 episode of the series heat. Yeah. And they're like, man, this really sucked. I was like, what? <laughs> and then the redux, they were like, well, you know, it's, you know, there's some good stuff here. I'm like, are you, what is wrong with you? Wow. Yeah, they're, 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 they're just coming yet, from so like a completely it, huh? different angle. They didn't like it, but it was basically that they had the same opinion. Like, uh, like of, I don't know what the final bomb of Rose was for each of those, but like to hear them talk about heat and then hear them talk about redux. I'm like, guys, you don't even know. Like, and I think about, man, wait till you get to like season four mm-hmm. and you're watching spell or whatever. Right. I mean, that's, I don't know, I'm looking forward to that. Um, he's like, he's going to look back at heat and just be like, yo, I, I didn't realize how good I had it. Three roses. Per- perhaps I, I, I judge you too harshly. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. I'm really, really looking forward to like just the the season eight and all of the stuff revolving around Lex. I, uh, that's the stuff I can't wait for. Mm-hmm. Well, if they I mean, get there, I, I I think they'll get there. Like, but I don't. People always, you know, when I was doing it, like, well, I hope you get through it. I'm like, well, yeah, I'm gonna get through. It. Why would I not? You know, people are like, oh, I hope you stay with it because like you know, podcasts come and go. You know. See, I'm yeah. still. I, I, uh, we talked about this beforehand, but I, I, I I'm burned by the the Chris Sullivan podcast. <laughs> <laughs> we were talking about that all. Was that before we started recording? Yeah. <laughs> <Was> that okay? <laughs> That's right. That, uh, Joey reminded us that uh, Chris Sullivan from This Is Us and Mike Rosen had a podcast for like a couple months, <laughs> and then it was gone. I don't even know. <laughs> I think I think Chris Sullivan had a kid or something. Maybe that's what it was. Like, uh, that, man, I don't know. That's a pretty good reason. <laughs> that's fair. Yeah, I got to wrap this thing up before I got kids, y'all. So, mm-hmm. um, but I, I'm always going to podcast in some form or fashion. But, um, yeah, we always have, we're joking about our always on to fill in the blanks, which, which have come into fruition. We got Star Wars over here. We got, you know, Arrow, Legends of Tomorrow just coming out. So, and every, everybody's going to have to hold you guys accountable for all of the decisions being made during Superman and Lois. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's after we're parents. Yeah. yeah, stop podcasting right then. No commentary. So um, that's isn't that weird? How you talk about Christ on Infraverse? Well, actually, that's not even a crisis, is it? Well, yes, it is. Elseworlds, right? 
They have no kids. They get engaged. Yeah, and they're engaged. like, and they're like 40, which is fine. Yeah. Sure. But then you do the crisis and they're like, I have two kids. <laughs> and they're, 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 oh, no, 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 no. That's what it is, right? It's the end of crisis. That, that's a huge continuity problem, too. Yeah. Because Lois is like, Clark, the boys need your help. He's like, the boys? What boys. do you mean? <laughs> I'm like, what? Didn't Martian Manhunter go and fix your brain? And I, you, anyway. That's for the audience, but that, but that's not the the, the Superman on Superman and Lois. That's a that, you know that's a great point, Joey. Thank you for bringing <laughs> that up. Like I, somebody tweeted this. Uh, I think it was Russ. He he used to write for a uh, Krypton site and, and we're friends on Twitter and stuff. And I I, re, I thought it was the funniest thing. He's like that. I, I'm pretty sure this is him. It was like that moment where General Lane turned to the camera and said, "Hey guys, we're not part of that Arrowverse." <laughs> In the season two, are you are you are you, are you up to speed on Superman and Lois, Mateo? Oh, I love I love season uh, two of uh, Superman Lois. To be honest, I had a hard time at a certain point, mostly just because of those stupid hiatuses. Like, dude, so yeah, painful. I'm not, and, and I feel bad too because, like, we were you know when the show came out, we were like, okay, we're every week we're gonna come out, and then it, when they started being all over the place, I'm like, well, I'm not gonna hold myself to a schedule either because <laughs> they certainly can't. You know, it kills your enthusiasm, right? It, yeah, no, it really does. And what's crazy is that um, so I recently listened to the pod with Lance. I forgot what Superman pod it was. Uh, um, Dean for Kryptonite. Highly yes. recommended. Love that one. Yeah. 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 I just listened to it a little while ago and they talked about season two and they just like praised it. Um, and I was just like, man, like I, I maybe I need to like go through this again because I remember at the end of the season, I was like just burnt out being like, you know, I keep and I keep starting it and it keeps going on hiatuses. And I'm just like not excited for the show anymore. And then um, I kind of like scrolled through season two again. I'm like, this is really good. Like they um they knew exactly what they wanted to do for the season. I have my critiques in regards to like I, I'm still a little bitter that they just killed Bizarro like out of nowhere. I thought yeah, that well, yeah, I, I'm still bitter they did wasted Doomsday's perfect orch. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it turned out okay. Yeah. But now you can never do his real origin because that's like, oh, you're just blah, 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 blah. so and it was it was it was a, another the obsession with the bait and switch, right? yeah oh, i mean yeah I, i'm okay i'm usually okay with it if like what you're switching to is like decent and the bizarro stuff was really solid so i was like okay i can forgive it just for right. that metric and also like I'm. but then they do it Doomsday. again then they do like it's oh it's it's actually parasite who i realized over time oh that is a parasite from the comic yeah. ali alston yeah. which i thought was like some weird allison mac reference at first like some cult leader i'm like mm -hmm. <laughs> mayor dean dean kane I don't know, is that what you guys are doing like is this, is this what we're doing now okay i guess sure uh but no that i mean to like to your point the bizarre stuff is good and then they kill him i'm like oh well now Very what are jarring. we doing <laughs> you know but it all, it all worked out though yeah but it, i it just did. want and them to stop with that <laughs> i will say like one of the things i really appreciate especially in season two is how like they are willing to like tell um superman stories with classic villains like parasite and bizarro which because like for some reason everyone thinks that the only villains that superman can fight are doomsday um zod and lex and you're like you know there's there's a couple more that you can play with like i'm still yeah. waiting for another metallo that'd be cool oh we gotta have, oh, man metallo like i want the live action uh terminator-esque Right, a Metallo. It's 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 right there. Exactly. Yeah. It's right there. Like I don't understand how, why people like I, I like I understand that <laughs> everyone loves the Christopher Reeve movies and like that's literally like everyone's go to. But there's there's more stories out there. Look, even he fought Nuclear Man. Okay, yeah. So, uh, th and that's the thing, right? L let people think I don't want to see another movie like Luther. No, I I do, but he just doesn't need to be the villain. He can be part of mm -hmm. the world. Right, just so, like Lois and Clark, season one, and etc. Like he's just he's there, and he's he's going to be in Superman Lois this season. Yeah, it should be the exciting. Way, mm -hmm. The way the yeah. Batman did it in yeah. terms of incorporating multiple villains. Yes, like yeah. it, you don't have to do a Spider Man three or <laughs> where all you're, you're throwing all these villains out there and they're all acting like a I want to kill the spider. You want to kill the spider? <laughs> what a terrible team up! <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, just going with the way the Batman did it, where. You know, hey, here's here's Penguin. Just he's just Doing he's just thing. here. Here's here's Catwoman. Here's you know he, here's your main villain of the you know and you can do that with especially with like a Lex Luthor where he's just there. You know, and, and you know what? And you know who he uses to do his dirty work? Metallo. <laughs> Metallo's right there. I want a small scale Metropolis story with Clark Kent and Lois Lane investigating some stuff, 
They no can't origin. prove Lexus the bad guy, and Metallo he has to fight. And maybe you know I don't know, like I don't know what they're doing with Superman Legacy. Who knows, right? But mm-hmm. that's he fights Metallo, and that's how he even discovers what Kryptonite is. Maybe you know, maybe he didn't know because in you know Smallville's different, and with the meteor shower, like that's it's always interesting to see him discovering Kryptonite in other versions. Mm-hmm. Like that, and again, animated universe, right? It's so cool that like Lex figured out that rock hurt him because he watched some security footage of Superman at the museum. <laughs> you know, that's, that's how he even figured out what kryptonite was in the animated mm-hmm. series. And so, mm-hmm. so much possibility, but um, yeah, I mean, I just, I, I agree about the other villains. Like I think Metallo would be so easy to do on, on the CW budget too. I mean, like, seeing oh, what yeah. they've done the last two seasons, they could easily mm-hmm. do Metallo, uh, but shouldn't he have fought him before? If he's like 45 years old or whatever, like, <laughs> Well, that's yeah, no, that, that's the, the bait and switch of it all. Well, where it's just kind of like, hey, he's been around for so long, but yeah, he still hasn't fought any of his like significant villains. Like, I guess, like in his 20 years of being Superman, like the only person he's fought is Lex. <laughs> Chris Reed movies. That's all that's what yeah. he's doing. He was like, yeah, I yeah. bought that computer that time. That's pretty crazy. Um, I, I think the Supergirl Superman that is a criticism for because like that always annoyed me about Supergirl season one. Although I think I, I enjoyed that season, it's probably the best season. Um, but she would encounter all these things like Red Kryptonite or Bizarro. I'm like, you they, never... they even did like whatever happened to the Man of Tomorrow, didn't they? Uh, or was that a later uh, for the man who has everything? I'm sorry, yes. Man, sorry. Sorry. I'm sorry, I'm yeah. sorry, yeah. yeah, for the man who has everything. Uh, but no, I'm like, Superman has never encountered these things. They're like, it was some kind of weird red kryptonite. Dr. Superman's been around for 20 years. Um, uh, anyway, I, I think that's, I don't even know how we got on this, but I think that's what I was saying about like how. <laughs> How suddenly they have two teenage boys when they had yeah. two, they had one infant child. I'm like, okay, but I, I look, hey, good on Superman. He locked that down quick, right? <laughs> Lois and him, like within like a year or two, they got engaged, married, found out the secret, had a couple of kids, boom, right? So Lois Lane's been a working mom for most of her career, huh? On She's that the best reporter of, of all time, obviously, and that's another reason. <laughs> so, 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 hot take though, I that might now be my favorite. Like, like, set up for Clark Lois and Superman. What we saw in Superman Lois, yes. like it was very refreshing. Where she's like, "Here's about this guy. We got real problems." I'm like, "That's that's a really cool update to the character." I think, and, and yeah. you, you know, because it's it's a fresh take on it. And obviously, that secret anything is not sustainable for too long because there's no difference between his Clark and Superman at all. Um, so. Yeah, you just told her, and that's cool. I'll t- talk about best things. Joy, you brought up the Batman, so I, th- I think you and I are in agreement on this. Let's get let's get Mateo's opinion. The Batman, mm-hmm. the best Batman movie. I'm still partial to the Dark Knight, but okay, fair enough. Uh, but I mean, it's it's up there. I mean, like I think it surpasses even Mask of Phantasm, which is like uh, Ooh, I don't know, man. That, I, I think, I, I, honestly, my my friendship with Lance will never allow me to make, take Mask of the Phantasm out of their one spot. <laughs> But I, I see oh, why you say that. I get it. Where will the Flash be allowed on your letterbox rankings? See, that's another, I blame Lance for this too. Because I, <laughs> Lance, are you watching this? You listen? Because I, because we had these Batman lists right on Letterbox, and I had like Justice League and Suicide Squad, and we had this whole. We were talking when he's like, "No, you can't have those on there." I'm like, "But Batman's in." He's like, "Yeah, but they're not a Batman movie." I was like, "Okay, I see your, I see your point." So I took, I took off some stuff. But yeah, this the Flash is a Batman movie, Joy. So yes, it will be on the list. Where will it rank? If I had to guess, I'm gonna say it's somewhere like after Batman Forever, but before like after Dark Knight Batman Rises. Forever. Wow, I love Batman Forever. It's fantastic. Do you not like Batman Forever? Uh, it's been a really long time, so I'm it's not the gonna. Best, <laughs> I'm gonna not gonna the best put 90s Batman opinion. movie. Do you watch? Um, I I get the feeling a lot of us watch the same YouTubers and stuff. What's a list productions? Is that the guy's name? Uh, he's making the Jason Todd fan film right now. I'll send you guys a link after this. I haven't seen it. Yeah. Uh, he uh, he has a lot of great like video essay videos and all this stuff. Mm-hmm. Anyway, he did a fantastic video a couple years ago about Batman Forever. I'm like, spot on. It's very good. Um, but anyway, are you talking about high top films? High top films. That's it. Yeah. A list productions makes fan trailers, doesn't it? Okay. Yeah. High top films. Okay. <laughs> That's right. The shoe would just. <laughs> Yeah, hey, I was just like, I doing? think I know who you're talking about, but I'm like, it's not Alice. <laughs> no, Alice, that's a fan trailer guy, right? I think so. Shout out to you guys if you happen to come across this. Love all you guys' stuff. But yeah, high top films. That's all right. right. I, I just need to share this now because my wife doesn't understand my Batman Forever references. 
my my son he's one and a half mm -hmm. uh and lately he just walks in, into my kitchen grabs you know the little decorative towels that hang from the stove and he flaps them vigorously up and down and then i just do the jim carrey i'm <laughs> mad <laughs> and my wife has not understood the reference at all and it's just really been hurting like wow. i I think that's fantastic. I quote Batman forever as much as I can. It's a very quotable film. And you got to understand, like me as a, what, 1995? So I was eight years old when it came out. Um, perfect age for me. Also the height of Jim Carrey, right? I mean, oh, yeah. Ace Ventura, The Mask, Dumb and Dumber, Batman Forever, and Liar Liar, all within a couple of years. Mm -hmm. Find me a better run of films for an actor. <laughs> or, or at least pop culture significance in that short amount of time. So a very impressionable youth. And I don't know, like at the time I was like, this is my favorite Batman movie, right? The, you know, Batman forever. Uh, and I think Batman and Robin pulls it down. It's like, it's association with the other, you yeah. know, uh, but on its own. Right. So check that out. Uh, High top films did a video on Batman forever. It's fantastic. Um, I don't know. Like that's kind of near the middle. I rank those, both those above Dark Knight Rises, by the way. That's a hot Dang. take. Yeah. I, I, you, uh, I your, still, still kind of like Dark Knight Rises. Uh, <laughs> There's some good stuff in there, but... Mm -hmm. Yours and Lance's uh, commentary on Dark Knight Rises probably have affected my opinion on it more than anything I've anything ever has. I haven't <laughs> listened to that in years. Maybe I'll go back. And I was just like, wow, this this isn't a good movie. God, man, that's that's such a... Obviously, Chris Nolan, like when Heath Ledger died, he was like, well, I don't know what to do, but I guess I'll, I'll, go, I'll come back for something else. And he tried a lot of stuff, make some big swings. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think the thing that got me was you guys were the first ones that I had ever heard put together. The like, so he was Batman for a few months. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and that's the first time that's ever like been put together like that. And I'm like, to, oh. to be fair, we did not do that math ourselves. It's been around online. Oh, like, yeah. To me, that's I mean, it's a tough like. Like Mateo, as a I, I hear what you're saying. Like like rises, mm -hmm. there's some good stuff in there. Like, mm -hmm. but like as a as a self-contained thing. Like, well, sure, you know. But like as as a Batman film about the character of Batman, who's like defining characteristic is like I'm gonna be Batman forever, <laughs> and you know, like you know, like it's it, it's out of character for him to be like, oh, my girlfriend who really wasn't my girlfriend died, so I quit. For I'm like, oh okay, and then also like just the whole like nuclear bomb stuff and i'm like oh it's too much so i don't know like that stuff was not that great yeah i i, I have a what is it a bias to it just like on a personal level like it was the, like I, literally the day i um i saw that movie was the day i shot my first film so i was just kind of like okay like i get to see this um i get to make my first film on the same day where i see the sequel to the movie that got me into movies in the first place mm -hmm. so it's just one of those things that like that whole trilogy i have a uh, i have a soft spot for so there's a um there's obviously a lot of problems with that movie like the issues i have are actually more about like like the stock exchange scene is really cool but also like the whole thing about him losing his money kind of like didn't it's like I didn't did you understand. guys not see that it got taken over by terrorists, but we're going to just honor all the trades that day. Yeah, exactly. You're like, oh, yeah, Bruce, you really spent all your money. Like you really made some <laughs> bad decisions. I'm like, what? That yeah. that it's like yeah. a Rocky five losing money. <laughs> like just just changing up, changing the pace. You know, he you know, so like, you know, that Rocky four director's cut. And I was like, oh, maybe they'll do Rocky oh. Five, but I don't, I don't think they are. I'm like, well, that's the one that needed it. I'm like, <laughs> anyway, a lot of people's favorite movie. I'm like, yeah, let's do it. Creed Three next week. I, I'm so excited. Oh yeah, man, I'm so I'm hyped for Creed Three. Hank is gonna like kill my... Killmonger. <laughs> it's just... People have literally been saying, yo, like the season premiere of What If Season Two is next week. It's called <laughs> uh, Killmonger versus King. <laughs> that is, look, the, the Rocky franchise, you know, Lance will talk about it. It's favorite, some of his favorite movies as well. But like that, that, that is, could that be the best franchise ever? I think the MCU kind of takes top spot on that front, but I'll, I'll give Rocky number two. <laughs> well, yeah, oh, fair enough. But like, right, like uh, from from a movie that like literally yeah. came out of nowhere in the late seventies and like got nominated for all yeah. these things mm -hmm. to continue on, like and just and just every time, especially the last three or movies or so, it's like, why are you doing? Why are you making this? Like, like, like they 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 beat the odds. 
tempted fate so many times with like Balboa. I'm like, people laughed at that, right? And that's like probably the, a solid movie. That yeah. could be like that's a that's a top that's probably a top two or three Rocky movie. <laughs> you know? And then Creed, you get Creed is a fantastic like Creed is amazing. Like the fir- I love the first Creed. I the, the second one is good, but the, the the first one is just just a revelation, right? Ryan Coogler, like that first that first fight where they're boxing like mm-hmm. the and the, and like there's no no cuts, you know, and you yeah. it's just anyway. I hope they bring some of that back because that, that kind of stuff is lacking for the the sequel. Maybe 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 Michael B. Jordan directing Creed three would bring some of that back. So anyway, I, just the fact that those movies have been around for like forty something years now, and they're always like there's like a life lesson, and I don't know. I think they're I think they're great. Yeah, and what only one universally agreed bad one of them like mm-hmm. like yeah. I mean Rocky Rocky three is like okay. Oh man! See, I—that's the one that I—I I, I always. Oh, Hogan and Mr. T. I mean, that's what we're talking about here. Like, but like Mickey, like that, that's true. Uh, I, 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 I cry every stuff. time. And, when then, and you know what? And that's the good, the best stuff of Rocky Five. Where it's like, get up because Mickey loves you. I'm like, oh my god. Yeah. Anyway, even the worst Rocky movies and, have something. And they to read. Offer. And, and I mean, even in the Rocky Three, there wasn't a formula. Like, like Rocky, yeah. you know he. And and you know Rocky one he loses Rocky two he wins and and that one he he loses and wins <laughs> yeah mm-hmm. yeah I really respect the Creed movies for not bringing like CGI Carl Weathers you know what uh, I mean <laughs> when uh I mean you, you know you know I'm sure someone yeah. thought of that so I'm sure someone mentioned that but oh like, no see Carl method- Weathers here here uh, hear me out he he gives <laughs> him a call and he says hey they just brought Luke Skywalker back on the show I'm doing let's <laughs> Let's find a I, way. I, I swear think to I God, if it. he's in Creed three, it's oh my God, oh my, oh no, <laughs> that's what's gonna happen. He's like, he's gonna be like, you know, almost gonna get knocked out by you know Hank and Jonathan Majors. Put respect on his name. I know, I know he is. Uh, great in in Lovecraft Country, by the way. That show was mm-hmm. mental. Has anyone seen that? You guys seen that? No. Um, I I Insanity. saw um I saw a few episodes. It got a little too crazy for me. Yeah. Like I, I had to, I had to tap out on that one, but yeah, I mean, he is awesome in that. And he's also in uh the five bloods, um, mm. one of Chadwick Boseman's final, um, films. I thought he, um, he was really good in that. So seeing him become this mega star, like in the last, like, uh, like six months, is just like ridiculous. Like literally I go see black Panther in theaters and they literally play a trailer for devotion, creed and ant-man. I'm like, this, <laughs> this man's taking over the world. <laughs> It's gonna take over the multiverse soon. Yep. So, no, I I hear you on uh on Lovecraft Country. That was not for the faint of heart. Don't watch mm-hmm. that with your son, Joey. <laughs> it's horrifying stuff. <laughs> and it's like it's it's I can I, you got to be have a, I mean, a certain mindset out of a certain like like tolerance to watch that. It's okay. it's some really crazy fun sci fi horror Lovecrafty and ideas. Um, but damn, is it just it's something else, man. I yeah, can't even it, explain it. So. If it's not Mickey Mouse Clubhouse, we're not watching it. So <laughs> yeah. Anyway, what do we think? Creed three. That's what. So yeah. So he's gonna be on the mat, right? He's gonna look, and you're gonna hear a voice. He's like, son, son. He's gonna look up, and you're gonna see like a just just the lights of the arena, right? And it's gonna be a shadowy figure, just a silhouette, right? A cloud. He steps out, and it's CGI Carl Weathers from nineteen what eighty nine or what eighty seven or whatever, whatever, whatever. Drago killed him. Um, <laughs> he's like, do it, son. He's like, anyway, I hope they don't do that. The, the way you right after Rocky that. dies, they got they're gonna they gotta they're gonna kill Rocky, right? I don't think so. I don't think he's even in this. Yeah, he's not in it. But oh, really? Even yeah, he's not in it at all. Oh wow. Um, honestly, the way you describe that, I'm just <laughs> like, I just, it just makes me think of um Monty Python and the Holy Grail, like seeing the the face in the sky. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like, I'm like, yep, and just what Carl with his face. I'm like, yep, that's <laughs> that's the way to do it. <laughs> I hope they don't do it. I I, I want to hope that they don't do that. But uh, do you guys do you guys watch the Scream movies? Yeah, well, okay. I've seen the first three. Okay, so, through, uh, uh was it fran- franchise fatigue for that one? Yeah, yeah. No, I <laughs> that was fantastic. Right? I, I I really I've those become probably my favorite horror franchise. I'm really excited about mm-hmm. six. Um, but Scream Five brought back CGI Billy Loomis. I'm like, if we're doing that <laughs> in Scream, then we 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 would have so very, well, very well make it. <laughs> A CGI Apollo Creed and uh and Creed three. So I don't I'm just so happy that it wasn't like Mr. T's son. 
I was just waiting mm. for it to be like, oh, you know, you know, because get with the drug. I figured they'd be like, oh, work for Drago, so let's do it again. I'm like, no. So this is his own story, a guy he knew from his childhood. I think the setup here is so it's good. Perfect. So I, I'm, I have really high hopes for this movie, and I hope it delivers because the Rocky franchise has been has been beating fate for the last yeah. like, three installments. And please don't mess it up because you stop by your head. And because uh, I mean, they could have ended a Creed too. Like he's at the grave, and that's a good ending. And you know, anyway, and then and then uh, and then Peter Petrelli and, and Rocky meet at the end. You know, so anyway, I was like, it's Jack, it's Jack. <laughs> I literally said that like when we were in the theater. Yeah. That, that's see, that shows. I, I saw. I'm always going to call him Peter Petrelli, but uh, I mean, that, that's him and Justin Hartley are probably the two reasons I started watching This Is Us. <laughs> I was like, this looks interesting. It's got Green Arrow and Peter Petrelli in it. I got to check this out. So. Yeah, just the Justin Hartley. I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. And I... It is so strange to go back and watch Smallville now after seeing that. And he's, I mean, dude, hey, he looks Kevin, great. He Kevin's looks pretty much the same. again. It's this, I mean, I know it's been like 15 year difference, but it's just like, yeah, season eight, nine, he's in that spiral, just doing Kevin Pearson mm-hmm. stuff. You know, he's <laughs> going to burn his green in our costume in the alley. Speaking of Sylvester Stallone, it's hashtag it's all connected. He was on an episode of This Is Us. Probably mm-hmm. because the Milo, the, I call him Peter Petrelli because I can never pronounce his last name, but Jack, his last name. <laughs> Gu- guaranteed the reason he showed up on uh, in Creed 2 was because he um, was this uh, slide was just like, yo, I showed up on your TV show. You're coming oh. to this movie. Yeah, yeah oh you had God. to wrap up that character. What a bad son. Your dad has cancer. And you're like, eh, whatever. Show up. Yeah, like his his arch enemy, then best friend's estranged son becomes his support group because his own son <laughs> is off wherever he is. It's like, come on, Peter Petrelli. Step Sorry, in. did Jack say that was was Rocky Jack's favorite movie? Yes. Yeah, that's all. I didn't even pick that up. I, yeah, oh that's all self referential stuff. That that's I, why yeah, I completely missed that. That's why Kevin was so excited to work with him. And yeah. Anyway, so. Oh my! Anyway. I, I hope, that, I hope, I hope Kevin got to see Rocky Balboa. No, he didn't. He died in like two thousand or something, right? <laughs> Not really, because I remember everyone was like looking yeah, at like right. the stickers on the cars and like, what year is it? that? Was so interesting. Like, when is he going to die? Um, spoilers for this is us. Mm-hmm. Spoiler well, for they, like they, the they fifth episode. The, it, it's like, very similar to the first season of The Flash. I thought where they're just tease like just teasing everything like i remember they made it seem like oh maybe him and rebecca got divorced oh like, right yeah yeah in the very early episodes yeah like, miguel f you miguel right and, and then they're showing the and then like oh there's the little necklace like wait is why is she wearing that necklace that he gave her even if they got divorced? the um did do you think they changed it do you think he initially this is this is us podcast now do you think that he initially died like in a drunk driving thing and they changed it to the house fire I don't think so. No, think, <laughs> and they, they said always... NBC kind of said, "Hey guys, we have the Super Bowl next year." No, but they, they just because I knew watching the first season when, when um uh like he's like drunk and he's mad and he's like gonna go apologize like he, he picks remember, up his car yeah. keys. I'm like, oh, this is when he's gonna dies, and he and she blames herself because she's like, you gonna go talk to mom. And anyway, that wasn't it. So it's just because he always, had to go back always, and save the switch. dog. <laughs> I always felt it was a bait and switch. Like everyone was thinking, this is the episode. What's going to happen? I'm like, I, I, I'm not. I don't think so. I don't think that they're going to pull that trigger. Like, because I'm like, yo, they're not going to do it this early. Because they, yeah. want, I already knew they wanted to do like a few seasons. So I'm like, you're, they're not going to blow it this early. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. That, I think that that's just such a unique show because it can really show like, you know, the the, the scope of like cause and effect and families. Mm-hmm. And, like I don't know. Like it speaks to. I think everyone can see something of their own self or family or life yeah. in that show through the years mm-hmm. and generations. I just it's just such a unique concept for a show, and and all credit to them. I mean, and and it's it's so interesting. It's like I'm so used to watching all this like sci-fi and stuff. Like, man, <laughs> there's gonna be no time machine. They're not gonna save Jack. Like it's not, they're never gonna go back in time and fix it. Like this man is dead. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. Like and like God, man. Like like I think there's one scene where they're all like in counseling, and she's like, my children, they have. 16 years of memories with her father and that's all they're going to have and i'm not I like, damn this is this is like heavy stuff anyway we all love this is us around right? here mm-hmm. <laughs> thank you for being on it justin hartley for or otherwise i wouldn't have watched this fantastic yeah. television show 100 mm-hmm. so the flash huh it's pretty exciting um <laughs> we're, we're all so excited we've been talking about just the flash for the last hour or so <laughs> no well i mean look we're going to see it. Lance and I are going to do a podcast about it afterward. You guys are going to hear it. Uh, I have more pendulum over to his point of view. Cause like at this point I'm like, 
you see the public response. Everyone loves Michael Keaton as Batman. You should have just done Batman Beyond. Should have just done that. Yeah. And you would have gotten the same response without any of this drama. Um, but we'll see. Like, it could still happen. Like, if this is successful, you'd think they'd be like, well, Michael Keaton, would you like to come sit in a chair for, <laughs> you know, make, <laughs> we'll pay you $25 million to just be some, the guy in the chair for some young guy to be Batman Beyond. So. Yeah, I mean, they said they're going to be doing Elseworlds, and that's literally just a, so they can justify the Joker movie and Batman Part Two, whatever. Yeah, and but like they literally could be like, hey, like DC Elseworlds, Batman Beyond. I think probably like maybe they just don't want so much Batman content because we're def- we're getting Brave and the Bold as well. So, mm. yeah. well, that's the thing, right? That's that's what makes it weird if this is a timeline thing and not a multiverse thing. Mm-hmm. It's just like mm-hmm. so. The Flash does all this. Does he erase this Michael Keaton Batman? Is this is it? Cause if this is not the same Michael Keaton Batman that we saw in the other two movies, then what's the point? You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. what's the point? You know, it, yeah. in, in quotations, like it's not like throw it all away. It's garbage. But it's like, I, like I think was, for, I think for them, like the point is, hey, we get to see Michael Keaton again. <laughs> That's it. I, I I gotta say though, like I I didn't I did not love the yeah I'm Batman. It felt like. Like, like in my mind, I'd always pictured like Ezra Miller showing up on like this weird Anton first looking Gotham, right? He's like mm-hmm. looking around and he sees he sees some some uh, some crime over here, and he sees Batman like kill some guy, right? And he's like, "Who are you?" And he says, "I'm Batman," right? I'm like, "Oh my god!" <laughs> Instead, it's like a joke. It's like Marvel or something. It's like <laughs> no, really though, because it's like, yeah. yeah. I'm Batman. Like into the camera. It's like <laughs> the fourth wall break. Did that is for the audience. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, we'll see. Well, people who are more critical of it than I am are like, it looks like it's like a commercial. I'm like, damn, that is actually a good point. <laughs> it does for like one of those Super Bowl commercials. Oh, yeah. But like Ben Stiller mm-hmm. playing Zoolander again or something. Anyway, we'll see. Um, I don't know. Like it's crazy. The Flash movie is finally coming out. The Flash. Show is ending like the year of the flash year in 2023. And uh it, it, it'll be we'll have some fun, we'll have some fun coverage about it uh moving forward. So any uh any other thoughts as we kind of wrap up here, guys? Um glad to see the flash ring in the trailer. I was just going through it again. I was like, oh yeah, we get to see the the flash ring, which we saw like maybe once in the show, which is we well, see it more than that. Well, but really, you, okay. yeah, but he it, it's more. I've I've noticed that it's more prevalent in these these later seasons. Yeah, <laughs> uh, go figure. Saw the reverse flash ring a lot in the show, though, didn't we? Didn't we? <laughs> <laughs> Rough. Um, but I'm oh, overall, um, I'm choosing to be genuinely excited for it until I'm uh, I receive evidence to think otherwise. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. Joey, are you excited? Oh, I am. I am. I'm excited to, if it's good, to be upset that it's it's the end, if you will. Or if it's I mean, it's, it's ba- this thing that's loomed over us for how many years now, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm excited to to see the movie. I'm going to just treat it as a a one off. But yeah, just I'm excited for it to just to be here and see what it is. <laughs> Be like, yo, at least we can just like move on after yeah. this, hopefully. Exactly. Yep. <laughs> How many years I'm like, this movie's not happening. <laughs> this movie was announced in 2014. Yeah. Are you serious? <laughs> like, when, was the, it, when was the Michael Keaton announcement? Uh, 2020 Fandom. Okay. Oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah. And this film was filmed like two years ago. <laughs> No, hundred percent. Like it's just like let's let's get past it, and then we can move yeah. past it, and we can see where we are. And 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 uh, my man, Michael Shannon is Zod. I, I, I would I would say he's the only person to come back to play Zod, but no, it's uh, Terrence Stamp did in two movies as well. So I guess yeah, yeah, I guess yeah. not. So do you think Supergirl's gonna break his neck? Do you think people will care? What do you think? That'd be hilarious if they have like a, something that no, is she's a gonna to it. She's gonna find another way. Yeah. She's gonna open the Phantom Zone portal. I'm sorry. I will because say though, Supergirl I, has more hope, like than that's, Superman, right? She's that's the paragon what, of hope. That's what the CW taught me. Uh, there's that shot. Of, there's by the way, there's way too much Batman of the day in this in this trailer, and presumably this movie. 
I'm old school. Like, I mean, I'm just saying like Batman works at night, but that shot of the bat wing flying and then like Supergirl flying up behind me, like, oh man, we could have got a really cool world's finest movie at some point, but we didn't. So <laughs> like, just saying like. <laughs> We're getting a Batman Robin movie though. Yeah, Damien. <laughs> Joe, you're so right. He's like, this is Robin. <laughs> like, the MCU movie. If there's no other Robins, I'll be so mad. Oh, God. Yeah. I'm not prepared for that. <laughs> That's going to be a very tough break if Damien's the one and only. No, because then where, where would the name Robin have come from, man? Well, I guess I'll just say, you know, they'll they come up with just make up some random thing. Oh, God. Like the Batman 89 comic. That guy's robbing that store. Oh. Wait, is that, is actually, I didn't read the comic. Robin. Is that literally what happened? It's terrible. I don't like the Batman 89 comic. It was oh. heartbreaking. It was heartbreaking. <laughs> right. I, I loved the Superman 78 comic, and I mm-hmm. did not love the Batman 89 comic, and I thought it was going to be the other way around. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. I was like, why do we have a cover of, like, Jorah and Lara? God, get some new ideas. Like, what? Oh, my God. Fantastic. Like, I, I loved everything they did. Batman 89, it was like so unrecognizable from the Tim Burton world, which is ironic because Sam Hamm, who wrote the first two movies, wrote it. Um, check it out for yourselves. There, yeah. There's a lot of various opinions about it, but I, I I was disappointed. I was sad to say, especially in the Robin. God. Was it even Dick Grayson, at least? No. It was not what Dick Grayson. Here? What are we doing here? Yeah. <laughs> This is, this is not Dick Grayson. See, uh, right, we, we probably are going to get Dick Grayson in the in the Batman. So we'll have we'll have two simultaneous Robins going after no Robins for twenty years. That's right. I, hey, you know what? Say we should let Batman and Robin that that Robin costume. Fantastic. Oh. Uh, the Nightwing. That's New Fifty Two with the red Nightwing yes. thing. It's cool. my. I'm Let's kind do that. Of, I've always been a fan of the red. Oh man, I'm I'm partial to the blue, and I will say I'm not a fan of the Titan show. But yo, that Nightwing suit is pretty oh, tight. Oh yeah, I I've only seen clips of that show. One day I will it watch is. it all. So just watch, Dude, watch the Superboy episode. Super Boy episode. Yeah. That's somebody says, and the Lex Luthor episode. Haven't I have I saw I saw a couple yeah, scenes. I, I, I know I, what happens. I was oh, spoiled. Okay. Oh okay, yeah. Um. Because I was Not like, great. hey, cool. And somebody's like, too bad he fill in the blank. I'm like, oh, thanks. Not, I mean, whatever, right? I'm not like a not like watching the show and ruin it for me, but I was like, oh. <laughs> but that that's that's over now, right? The Titan show, much like Doom um, Patrol, so, they're all ending. Well, I they so. um they still have the second half of their current season, but once that's out, they're done. Okay. Yeah. I have a theory that because like James gonna say, like, oh, we're only telling you like a certain a bunch, uh certain amount of stuff that we're doing for phase one. And so I have a theory that maybe Titans might be in play purely just because like maybe I think maybe they're waiting to see how Blue Beetle does. And if it really like takes off, then be like, hey, like now we can do Teen Titans. And since we're doing a bat family, Nightwing is probably already established. So we could have Nightwing assembling the Titans. There's no way they would have greenlit Goth- Gotham uh, Nights or whatever that show is. Oh, gosh. Why did uh, you remind it, me that existed, Joey? There's you- no way that DC would never greenlight something like that if, <laughs> if they had a plan of maybe one day. Oh, gosh. Gotham Nights. My favorite tweet about that was um, someone posted a poster and like, I've been reading my com- I've been reading comic books my entire life. and I have no idea who any of these characters are. <laughs> it's like the poster poster of it like it's so true oh man yeah that's you know uh, uh, gotham you are no longer the worst batman tv show hey look i haven't seen it is it hard is it wrong for me to judge that before it comes out i don't know like are we not supposed to be sold on things based on how they're presented to us before they come out to it to encourage us to watch them but i wasn't i was not (laughs) encouraged that's the thing (laughs) i was not encouraged oh man it's so good yeah so hey check out batman 89 by yourselves. Mm-hmm. Let me know what you think. Uh, Superman 78, I loved, but I love the Christopher Reeve stuff. Maybe people won't like that. I don't know, but I, I think yeah. definitely that paid way better tribute to what it was doing and continuing than Batman 89 did, in my opinion. So, oh. And make sure to check out Flash, The Fastest Man Alive, the tie-in comic book <laughs> that comes out before The Flash. <laughs> I've got all three issues. I haven't read them yet. Um, <laughs> yeah, and that, oh, the, the metal on that blue and gray bat suit, dumb. Hopefully it looks better in the movie. I don't know why he has, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah, I thought the same yeah. thing. Yeah. He's great looking armor. He has like, what is this? So anyway, but that's not Christian Bale. It's Ben Affleck, everybody. 
get a grip of yourselves. We're never going to see him again, other, unless he's the Batman in uh, Batman in uh, what? Uh, Brave the Bold. bold. <laughs> yes, because That'd be a Talia, bold decision. Oh, it would. That's why he comes out of retirement because Talia was pregnant with his child when she died, obviously, and that's Damien. <laughs> The League of Shadows salvaged him from her dead body and raised him. And uh, this is a sequel to The Night Rises. There you go. Perfect. Mm. All right. Well, on that note, Joy, where, where are you out there online if people want to find you? Uh, you can find me on Twitter at JoeyD94 underscore 13. And you can also find me here on the Always Hold On To Network of Podcasts, uh, co-hosting Always Hold On To Star Wars with Chris Fuchs and Kevante Chillis, because just what the internet needed was another podcast talking about Star Wars. There it is. <laughs> All right, Matt, what about you? Uh, you guys can find me on Twitter at Matt Santiago 824 And you can also find me on the Culture Mash podcast, where me and my buddy talk about Eastern and Western media, talk about the difference between, difference between uh, American film and anime. Awesome. awesome, man. Let's check that out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I call you Mateo because there's so many mats. But, yeah, no, you know, I, you're the only one here nights. <laughs> it's easy. It's easy. <laughs> there really are Matt. What Matt and Mike? Most common names in America. Let me tell you. So, I oh, I always get confused for Michael for some reason. Do, do your <laughs> friends call you by your last name? No. Um. So in my f- friend group, everyone calls me Mateo because um, okay. there's there's three Matts in our group. So we all have our own nicknames. And gotcha. so Mateo is the one I um, go by within that group. So usually like um, when I when I'm in a setting where I'm like, OK, I definitely like am around people with more than one Matts. I'm just like, oh, I'll just go by Mateo for simplicity's sake. Yeah, no, I, I got you. We got a, a good friend group of, full of mics, and a couple of them have been on the podcast, and we just refer to them by our, by their last names. So, mm-hmm. so. Uh, yeah, man, good times. And hey, Joey Mandalorian season three coming out. So. Yeah, so yeah. excited. Oh yeah, I'm. I just reminded my wife that I'm like, all right, I'll be uh, going to bed early Tuesday night, and uh, uh, the the five o'clock wake up start again. <laughs> I, I'm just I'm just very confused because you know uh, you know I watched the last episode of Mandalorian. Mm-hmm. And and Grogu went off of Luke Skywalker, and I was very surprised to see him in the trailer for season three. So I'm looking forward to seeing how they how they uh, reunite this season on the Mandalorian. You'll, you're in for a surprise. I'm sure you'll know within mm-hmm. the first thirty seconds. Yup. <laughs> Previously on a different show. <laughs> yup. Does, does that not bother anyone? Like, <laughs> like I. <laughs> that... <laughs> Similar to what I said about my dad with Arrow, my dad watches the Mandalorian. He did not watch Book of Boba Fett. Please let <laughs> us know what he And thinks. I've been, I, I think I just said, hey, I, for the last year, I've been like, hey, dad, I, I think you should watch the Book of Boba Fett. I think you'd like it. I didn't want to spoil anything, but I'm just like, oh, hey, you should watch that before it comes out. And he's like, that'll ah, be fine. Oh, there's two episodes he'll definitely like. <laughs> the yeah, ones that every- have this guy called the Mandalorian. You might know him. <laughs> There are two great episodes of Book of Boba Fett. That's right. So anyway, mm-hmm. I like that's the thing, right? Like we're all so plugged into this, we know, but I feel there are a lot of people out there who are gonna are gonna be like, what? Like I don't mm-hmm. know, because the Mandalorian she, really pushed through a lot, like just a lot of the cultural barriers on like that is Star Wars now. Yeah, mm-hmm. like you go anywhere, it's Baby Yoda and Mandalorian. I, I was flipping through channels last night, and Mand- they were running the Mandalorian on ABC. Whoa, that's yeah, wow, really, yeah. So, I know they but, did that for Andor, but wow. Yeah, they they were they had the the it was the pilot was on, so trying to get people excited to watch season three, I guess. Yeah. So mm-hmm. it's just that that the season two finale is one of the greatest moments of my life. It's just seeing <laughs> Luke Skywalker show up, right? I mean, that's not a joke. So it's just so um and then it was such an emotional moment. It would have been cool, even like it, it was awesome because of Luke, and then it was awesome because of like the bond that you'd seen these two characters form. They had mm-hmm. to break up, and like, oh man! And then for them to be back together again like that, I feel like that's a that's a shrewd business decision and not a storytelling decision. But we shall see. Because I mean, they had to spend at least a season apart. I think. Oh, right. <sighs> to give it some weight, because now it's yeah. like immediately yeah. the next episode. They're back together. You didn't even get a you didn't even get an off season apart. We got the book of Boba Fett. Yeah. Yeah. That was interesting to see him without Grogu for two episodes. <laughs> it, it, it's it's I'm curious about it, mostly just because like a lot of time when I'm watching a show, I'm like, how are you gonna write around this kid being with him all the time? Because <laughs> he can't problem. do 
<laughs> because he's like he can't do a lot of like action stuff with him like with Grogu all the time. So it's one of those things that like every episode, every other episode of season two, they're like he's okay, dropping him off at the yo, Tatooine lady's house. <laughs> yo, or the school, whatever. It's just like Eating so. The cookies. What are we gonna do this this time? Huh? I but, just like I think you need. He's been cute. And he's been a mystery and whatever, right? It's that character has to evolve past that at some point. And the it clever looks like thing, yeah, it looks like they're going to, like, we'll with see. using his powers and 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 at least he can defend himself now at the very least. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But for uh, weekly coverage of the Mandalorian, <laughs> be sure to check out Always Hold On to Star Wars. There it is. There, there it is. is. Shameless plug. There we go. I've got my Mandalorian shelf ready to go right behind me. So I've been. Oh, I see that. Is that? Uh... I, uh, there's quite a few. I've got a Razor Crest. I've got Grogu. I've got uh, the N1 Starfighter. I've got Luke Skywalker rescuing Grogu there. So do you have a... Boba Fett's starship? I do um, over here, but no, that is a that is a slave one. You can't say that anymore. That it's Boba a, Fett's starship. Uh, the the instruction manual <laughs> says it on it. <laughs> All right, y'all. Good times. Good, good good talking about the Flash and everything else in between. This is us. Mandalorian mm-hmm. there at the end. Uh, smaller crowd, but that kind of leads to, to more open uh, conversation. We can go all over the place. So that's a good time. Uh, we'll be back next time, whenever that may be, mm-hmm. uh, for our next new 52 level 33.1. But all together now. Until then, always, always hold on to, small hold on on to, to small Smallville. Bill. I went too fast. <laughs> If you're watching this and you're not a member of the Patreon and you would like to be part of these conversations, uh, go to patreon.com slash always Smallville with one S. As for the podcast itself, you can find us on Facebook at always hold on to Smallville. And you can find us on Twitter at always Smallville with one S. And you can send us an email at always Smallville at gmail.com once again with one S. And I encourage you all to uh, listen to our flagship show, Always Hold On to Smallville. Our first spinoff, Always Alone to Arrow. Uh, our next spinoff, Always Alone to Savannah Lois. And then, of course, Always Hold On to Star Wars. So we have our Always Hold On to family of podcasts. We have going here, the ever-expanding multiverse of our podcast. And so if you like the conversation here, uh, check us out a uh, podcast form over there. No video for those. Uh, that's a whole a whole other format and venue we have going on over there. So there you have it. And uh, we'll see you guys next time. And until then, always hold on to Smallville.